memories light up the sky of days when life for me meant holding on hoping that I would be strong always needing more to see that somehow I would surely find my way by faith I'd see a brighter day and I believe in the clouds and I believe in rain I believe in miracles and I believe that your love will always be the same I believe the sun will shine again now I live in confidence I know that God above believes in me he touched my life and now I see that I'm a portrait of his love created in his image here I stand my life together in his hands and I believe in the clouds and I believe in rain I believe in miracles and I believe that your love will always be the same I believe the sun will shine again I believe, I believe, I believe, and I believe in the clouds, and I believe in rain, I believe in miracles, and I believe that your love will always be the same. The sun will shine again. The sun will shine Hello, I'm Wintley Phipps, and it is a blessing to share these few moments with you. I've been so blessed in my life, and my resume is strangely eclectic. On the same page, you'll see Billy Graham Crusades and Saturday Night Live. You'll see Bill Gaither homecoming videos and you will see Soul Train. You'll see singing for Mother Teresa, as well as singing for seven presidents of the United States of America. But right from the start, I want you to know that those are not the greatest accomplishments in my life. The greatest accomplishment in my life is that this black man, with the help of God, has provided nurture for three African-American sons and has worked with all his heart to make their mother the most supremely happy woman in the world. Since my college days, I've been in love with the same woman for almost 50 years. 
and it is still as special as the first day I saw her. This August, we celebrate 47 years of marriage, and I told her, if she ever leaves me, I'm going with her. For the next few moments, I want to share with you one of the greatest gifts I believe you have at your disposal. It is a dynamic weapon in your arsenal that can open the doors to a bright and successful future. I'm speaking about the power in your dreams. Throughout the wide sweep of human history, there are pivotal personalities who have made history and showed us the power that lives in our dreams. Martin Luther King Jr. was one of those. Some years ago, on May 8, 1995, the 50th anniversary of VE Day, it was my privilege to stand in a little graveyard beside a church near Oxford in England. And there in the early morning hours of that misty English morning, I paused to pay tribute to one of my heroes of history, Sir Winston Churchill. His grave was decorated with flowers and tributes left by grateful citizens of the world who 50 years later could not forget what Sir Winston Churchill meant to the world in a critical hour in Earth's history. And even though some 50 long years had come and gone, silent floral memorials were left at his grave by freedom fighters from Greece and Norway and France who could not forget what one man did to help save the dream of a free world. They came to show their gratitude for this gallant Englishman with a bulldog spirit who during a dark hour in Earth's history dared to stand tall against the onslaught of Nazi tyranny. They could not forget how at a moment during World War II when all of Europe seemed lost, Churchill as Prime Minister of England dared to defy the Nazi threat they could not forget how this one man with his dogged optimism, his incredible command of the English language, rallied a dispirited nation to fight on for the cause of freedom. One of the many tributes that I saw left upon his grave was a single sheet of paper, obviously left by an American, uh, on the paper were written words by John F. Kennedy about Churchill, who once said of Churchill, he commissioned the English language and sent it off to war. I think perhaps what amazed me most about Churchill was that throughout his life, unbeknownst to the world, this giant of a man suffered with severe bouts of clinical depression. And yet when the British Empire and the world needed him most, Churchill, through the sheer force of his eloquence and pathos and ethos, single-handedly bolstered the courage of a nation and made them understand that they could and would live as a free people. One of the lessons I learned from his life is that all success begins with the power in our dreams. You see, just as knowledge is the intellectual uh, fuel for greatness, your dreams are the fuel for your success. You see, when you dream, the vision you see becomes the compass. Yes, the North Star that takes you to your destiny. And those who dream have usual 
and blessed insight and vision that is uncommon. I think it was the poet Jonathan Swift who said that vision is the art of seeing things invisible. <laughs> One day, Michelangelo saw a block of marble that its owner had thrown away. And he said, no, 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 give it to me. It is valuable for there is an angel imprisoned in it and I must set him free. Winston Churchill himself said, vision is when you can look farther than you can see. Visionaries who dream are able to look farther than they can see. Visioners, visionaries who dream are able to rise above the low plains of mediocrity and scale the mountain's height. And in the end, they stand in triumph at the summit of their goals and achievements. Visionaries who dream are true originals in a world of copies and facsimiles. They take the road less traveled and they march to the beat of a different drummer. You see, your dreams are the spark that turns over the engine of new possibilities. They are the bright lights that push back the curtains of night so that dawn can rise on your indecision and confusion. And to be successful at life, you must first have a dream. You see, it is in our imaginations that our dreams are born. And I think it was Albert Einstein who once said that when it comes to success, <laughs> imagination is more important than knowledge. I think he was a pretty smart guy. Einstein was reminding us that everything begins with a dream. You see, the ability to dream is one of the most mysterious and glorious privileges of the human heart. And ever since I can remember, my destiny and accomplishments have been shaped by the power in my dreams. You see, I, I was born on the island of Trinidad. And as a child, I remember running around in bare feet. We didn't have much but I had my dreams. I had a little red tricycle and I would go in the backyard of our house and turn that tricycle on its side and use one of the backside wheels as a steering wheel. And I would dream. I would dream that I was going to faraway places in the world, flying all over, meeting important people at the age of five and six years old. In 1965, we moved to Montreal, Canada. And while many in their adolescence and teenage dreams often bury their dreams, in my imagination, I nurtured my dreams. I remember when my father would take us to the airport to say goodbye to relatives or friends. I would look around the airport to see if anybody was looking before I left the airport. And I would grab a handful of those luggage tags and put them in my pocket. And when I got home, I would close the door for privacy. And with a pen, I'd write on those tags, Wintley Phipps, Flight 393 London, Flight 676 Paris. I would dream of one day going to all of those places in the world. And when it seemed as though music would be the vehicle to take me to my dreams, I began dreaming of being like the entertainer Tom Jones. And I would dream that I was traveling all over the world, singing to large audiences. But you know, one day when I was 16, I met Tom Jones and I realized he had everything, but he wasn't happy. And then one day at the age of 16, I surrendered my life to God. And boy, has it been an awesome ride. There's no one in the world I could have ever wanted to meet that I haven't met. There's no place in the world I could have ever wanted to go that I haven't gone. No dream I have had that I haven't realized and seen come to fruition. You know that kid 
with the luggage tags? Well, he has flown more than 4 million miles on Delta Airlines alone. That's not including United or American. And yes, I've been to every inhabited continent of the world. Now, there are times when I do get tired, but you know what? I'm energized and driven by the power in my dreams. I've learned in my life, you can only go as far as you can dream. And I've learned in my life, you'll never get more out of life than what you're dreaming for. If you believe you can, you will. If you believe you won't, you don't. And as a child, my dreams were more than just animated flights of fancy. They were more than just dreaming of impossible things in the future. My dreams were part hope, part illusion, yes, part pretense, and part prayer. As a child, my dreams carried me soaring above the anguish of my present circumstance into a galaxy where all that I could conceive could be achieved, where all that I envisioned would be possible. And over the last over 40 years, if there's something I have learned, it is that a child with a dream is a child with a future. You see, dreaming is the process of forming mental images of things you can't touch or feel. It is the reproductive faculty of the mind, the picturing process of the mind, and we are transformed into what we dream about. I heard one man say, I've dreamed many dreams that have never come true. I've seen them fade at the dawn, but enough of my dreams have come true, thank God, to make me want to dream on. To see your dreams become a reality, I want to tell you about just a few things you will need. First, you're going to need passion. You're going to have to believe in your dream when others don't. Like those two prisoners who were held in a dark dungeon. In that impossible situation, one prisoner looked at the other and said, Hey, Joe, here's my plan. <laughs> yes, you have to have passion and believe when others don't. Secondly, to see your dream become a reality. You're going to need support and help. You know, we may dream alone, but we never achieve alone. I remember one day I was talking to a lady who asked me, Hey, when is your album coming? I said to her, album? What album? She said, come on, what's the holdup? I said, oh, it's going to cost a lot of money. She said, what's it going to cost? This was 1979. I said, oh, at least $10,000. She said, oh, I'll give you $10,000. And that's how my recording career began, with a gift from a kind, dear lady named Betty Rohack in Munising, Michigan. And that's how I recorded my first album. And yes, I've recorded more than 30 albums since then, Grammy nominations, and, and I've truly learned, yes, we may dream alone, but we never achieve alone. You know, my friend Alex Haley, who wrote the book Roots, he used to keep in his office a picture of a turtle sitting on a fence. He said that was his way of reminding himself that he didn't get there on his own. So remember, always thank those who have contributed to the successes you've achieved. One of my favorite quotes is that love may be silent, but gratitude must speak. Always remember to express your gratitude to those who've come alongside you 
and helped make your dreams come true. Thirdly, to see your dream become a reality, you're going to have to believe that you don't have to compromise to be recognized. Don't compromise your integrity. Don't compromise your honesty. And trust, things will always work out as long as you are faithful to principles that are true and right. Right principles, right values are the foundation of your success. And when you compromise principles of integrity and honesty, you are building on a cracked foundation. And any building built on a cracked foundation will come down. Fourthly, to see your dreams become a reality, you're going to have to believe in the power of treating all people with respect, especially when you don't know who they are, where they're going, or what they can do for you one day. It was over 40 years ago I was singing in Baltimore, Maryland, and I came down off the platform and I felt a tap on my shoulder. The young lady said, excuse me, sir, I just heard you sing she was a little discouraged, about to really be fired something from her job. Uh, she was making $25,000 a year, 40 years ago. And she said, excuse me, I feel like I can talk to you. Do you have time to talk to me? I said, sure. So she came by our home. We talked and prayed. And after praying with her, I said, you know, before you go, God has impressed me to tell you he's going to bless you and give you an opportunity to speak to millions of people. She said, you think God would do that for me? That young lady's name was Oprah Winfrey. And I can tell you, treat all people with respect when you don't know who they are, where they're going, or what they may be able to do for you one day. She has been the greatest supporter of my life, my work, and my ministry. Fifthly, to see your dreams become a reality, you're gonna to have to believe in the one who can make sure, and this is a big one, that you are in the right place at the right time. You know, it's nothing like showing up and being in the right place at the right time. You know what I mean? 10 minutes earlier, you would have missed that opportunity. 10 minutes later, that opportunity would have missed you. I remember riding on an Amtrak train. It was 40 years ago or more. On Amtrak, you know, when you don't want someone sitting next to you, you learn how to camp out. And this man had camped out, and uh, but I looked into his eyes. He had his papers, his food around him. He looked a little discouraged to me, and there were other seats available. But I said to him, excuse me, is anybody sitting next to you? He smiled, he said no, and he pulled up his papers and his briefcase. His name was Chuck Colson of Watergate fame, who went to prison for the Watergate scandal and came out and started what became and has become the largest prison ministry in the world. He came out of prison committed to spending the rest of his life only helping prisoners and their families. He mentored me. We became dear friends. And because of his mentorship, I started building an organization called the U.S. Dream Academy. And for 25 years now, we have provided tutoring and mentoring after school to children of incarcerated parents and children falling behind in school. We've seen thousands of young people's lives changed. And with the help of a wise board and generous donors, we have raised over a hundred million dollars doing this work. Now I believe you being in the right place at the right time can change the trajectory of your life. And you have everything you need. Yes, I'm talking about you. 
You have everything you need in your heart, in your head, in your mind that will help make your dreams come true. Perhaps for you, today opens a new chapter in your life. I believe that you're about to be blessed with success in unusual ways. You see, life is about choices and those choices determine the path you travel and they determine the quality of life you enjoy. Because of the choices you've made, you now have in your hands the power to shape your future. And the greatest joy and source of adventure that you will ever have in your life, you will see the future you have envisioned for yourself become a reality. That is a great adventure to live. Someone once said that there are only two kinds of people in the world. The ones who wake up and say, oh no, is it morning? And the others who wake up and say, wow, what a morning. I say to you today, let the power in your dreams wake you up every morning saying, wow, what a morning. And your dreams will always be stronger than all the evidence stacked against you. And as long as the balance of your dreams is greater than the sum of your fears and your doubts, you will succeed. And now that your excellent team is around you, they've worked hard, they've come up with a game plan, and everyone must come together now and pull together to put that plan in motion and make it work. I say it this way, now that you've planned the work, you must now go out and work the plan. Growth will always take patience, will always take sacrifice. Because all of us, all of us would like blessings without character, but you know what? Blessings without character will destroy you. That's why you don't give a 16-year-old kid a new Corvette, right? Because blessings without character will destroy you. That kid will self-destruct. So as you build your dreams, remember to build your character. Somewhere I read that a smooth sea never made a good sailor. So expect some difficult days. Somewhere I read, if you removed all the rocks, the brook would lose its song. <laughs> I heard an old black lady down south say, son, if the mountain was smooth, you couldn't climb it. Oh, how true that is. Yes, your dreams are the mysterious union of hope, risk, and desire. And when you believe in things you cannot prove, you are shaping the future and building your dreams. Your dreams will say to those around you, I can't prove I'll make it, but I'm willing to give it a try. I can't prove I'll make it, but I'm willing to give my all to see this become a reality. Oh yes, you will have mountains to climb. Yes, you will have deep waters to cross. But if you stand still, you will not progress. If you go backwards, sure enough, you will not progress. The only way to progress and to advance is to go forward. So believe in the power of your dreams and go forward. Some years ago, I came across a letter written by a high school senior who had received a letter of rejection from the college he wanted to attend. And this is what the letter read. Dear admissions officer, I am in receipt of your rejection of my application. As much as I would like to accommodate you, I find I cannot accept it. 
I have already received four rejections from other colleges, and this number is, in fact, over my limit. Therefore, I must respectfully reject your rejection. And so look for me to be there for classes on September 18th. Oh, today you set out on a voyage upon life's open sea and you will achieve, you will achieve great things, but you must believe in the power of your dreams. There will be difficult days. Remember, people feed pigeons, but they shoot at eagles. But you must believe in the power of your dreams. And remember the immortal words of Robert F. Kennedy, who once said, some see things as they are and ask why. I dream of things that never were and ask, why not? Believe in the power of your dreams. There are times when you will feel, wow, I didn't know it would be this hard. I didn't know it would be this intense. Or you might think there's just too much hard work here. Or sometimes, where's the support? Where's the help? Listen, you advance and move forward. Let others catch up. Believe in the power of your dreams and keep on climbing until you reach your goal. Keep on striving with all your heart and soul. Remember, all things are possible with God. So don't give in. Remember, He'll move your mountains because He believes in your dreams. So hang in there, keep the faith, and always believe in the power in your dreams. a dream within your heart and if you make a start he wants for you to know all of your needs he will supply he's always standing by He's there to see you through Just keep on climbing Until you reach your goal Just keep on striving With all your heart and soul All things are possible With God so don't give in He'll move your mountains He believes in your dream And when the road ahead seems long With faith you can be strong He's there to show the way With every step you know what's right You'll conquer in His might He'll bring that brighter day just keep on climbing until you reach your goal. 
just keep on striving with all your heart and soul all things are possible with God so don't give in he'll move your mountains he believes in your dreams you just keep on climbing until you reach your goal just keep on striving with all your heart and soul all things are possible with God so don't give in he'll move your mountains he'll move your mountains he'll move your mountains he believes Redeemer, and me 